Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Saracen Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, Longfish, and Fear No Equal. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the fourth encounter in the IB Slayer, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, ability, spells, items, and hand. We are holding a plus two short bow. We are using plus one arrows. Falklucan Bendor still has Entangle, Fairy Fire, Shillelagh, Speak with Animals, Fly, Invisibility, Levitate, Protection from Good and Evil. Available. And three scrolls of haste. Fighter 132 of 172 HP. Swinging our Great Axe, we still have Second Wind, Action Surge, and two uses of Indomitable available. We've still got those circlets of blasting, one on the head, one in the hand. 110 out of 110 HP, one charge remaining on the Wand of Magic Missiles, four first level slots, three third, three fourth, two fifth, one sixth. Arcane Recovery is still available. In my hand is the Wand of the War Mage. Currently at 118 out of 138 hit points. I have three level one, three level two, one level three, two level four, two level five, one level seven spell slot remaining. I have both charges of Vangelo Divinity. The staff of the Python and a shield plus two. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. The monsters in this fight are two Dark Elf Mages, accompanied by three Dark Elf Elite Warriors. Dark Elf Elite Warriors have innate spell casting, so they can throw darkness and fairy fire at enemies, and they can throw levitate on themselves. They have multi-attack, so they can use their short sword twice in a turn. Carries with it 3d6 poison damage. Everyone except Fear No Equal. How do we feel about poison damage? They eat it for breakfast. <laughs> they also have a parry ability, so as a reaction, they can add 3 to their AC. They have hand crossbows. Hand crossbows also have poison. They have a passive perception of 14, so no threat to the rogue. The Dark Elf Mages have the same innate spell casting, and then they have a bunch of other spell casting. They have a variety of different spells all the way up to 5th level. They also have the ability to summon a demon once per day, so that could get pretty interesting. Hmm. That's what I've got. Terrain and effects. We're still in tunnels because that's the nature of this dungeon. Directly in front of you is a 20-foot chasm. It's a DC 15 athletics check to climb out of it. Otherwise, these are 10-foot tall tunnels all around you. Any questions about the terrain? How deep is the chasm? 20 feet, 2d6 falling damage. Tactics, what do you guys think for tactics in this fight? That's a good question. We either put a cork in the bottle here, or we let them come out to us. Either way, I think we're facing demons. So I think maybe we let them come out to us to reduce spell damage. They're going to throw darkness around, and that's going to limit our options a lot. 20 foot chasm is going to be interesting. Speak for yourself, I got winged boots. I'm stumped at this one. We do know from previous experience, if we're going to crack open Spirit Guardians, do it early. Because darkness is really going to mess with us. You should still be on. So it's already got all of us included. How many spellcasters do you have over there? I have Globe of Invulnerability, which would block all 5th level spells. And it's a 10 foot radius around me, if we want to use that. I'm looking how the DC 15 athletics check interacts with the uh, second story work. You climb at full speed, so everyone else, if they were to climb out, they would be climbing at half speed. You still have to make the check. If you succeed, you do it at full speed. There's no action economy to this. I mean, if you fail, then you can move somewhere else. You just can't climb up. Got it. One of those per turn. And I, I think in the past you said you can dash for another one. It's still going to be tough. Yeah, we're not doing that. That's not going to work. If only you had a way to fly. And that's the other option. So it's either I put the globe up and we cork the bottle like you said, or I put fly on people. I actually thought that Blind Oracle could cast fly on himself, but I might be wrong about that. I have choices. We can levitate and crawl on the ceiling. We could fly. There are choices there. So are we going to cork or are we going to just say go out there? I feel like that's going to come down to initiative. I feel like if we win initiative, it'll be easier to go out there. Actually, yeah, if we win initiative, it'll be easier to cork this up because then they got to come to us again. Yep. If we lose, I think this gets a bit more complicated. I'm going to go south to try and deal with that Dark Elf fighter one way or another. Okay. So hopefully if we cork, then I'll be dealing with him because he's already outside the cork. Makes sense to me. If there's no other thoughts, then let's go ahead and roll initiative. Anybody get higher than a 20? The rogue has a 25.5. 21 on the owl. Anyone have between a 20 and a 15? 17 on the wizard. 15 on the cleric. Yay! <laughs> you found the double digits. Anyone have between a 15 and a 10? 14 on the fighter. I have a 6. Brutal. So, Cork? Yeah. Rogue, start us off. I do not have line of sight to that draw warrior down there, really. He is in cover. This is not a floor to ceiling rock. It is a ground rock. Bonus action hide. Take the shot. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's such a waste. A 35 to hide. 32 to hit. 32 hits. 
41 points of damage. That's it. After the rogue, we go to the owl. He is going to dodge, because there's nothing really in range. After the owl's the wizard. Cast the 6th level spell, Globe of Invulnerability. I'll need a 10 foot radius, please. Any spell of 5th level or lower, cast from outside the barrier. Can't affect creatures or objects within it. After the wizard, we go to the cleric. Can I see the southmost wizard? Let's take a look. Yeah, you got a lot of sight to her. Level 4 Guiding Bolt. What's the range on Guiding Bolt? 120. Hit me. Well, please don't hit me, but... 24 to hit. 24 will connect, even with the cover. 76 for 28 damage. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, there's like five fives in there. And then she's guided. Dimly lit, and uh, next person attacking the wizard gets an advantage. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Sounds good. Beat up that wizard. After the cleric, we go to the fighter. I'm going to run south to the dark elf fighter. I'm going to need to dash, but I have boots of flying, so I can go right over that chasm. Do you have to activate those or turn them on? Or... Nope. They are always on. They just count whenever I'm in flight. That's spiffy. I'm going to push my button. Second wind for 18 health recovered. That's the button you're pushing in this instance? I'm not going to action search, no. Dark elves. They have to figure out how this is going to go down. So first thing we're going to do is... Summon a pair of demons. The maze that was hit with Guiding Bolt is going to attempt to summon a shadow demon. They have a 50% chance of success on this. Succeed on a 19 out of a d20. This fiend is going to get a 23 for its initiative. That wizard is going to go hide. The second wizard is going to do the same thing. Here's the d20. They get a 4, so they fail to summon a demon. But that's still their action. They're going to move the... Elite warriors. Oh, we can't really pot shot you guys because our range is terrible because we just have hand crossbows. He's going to move to there and cast levitate on himself. He's going to move to there and he's going to cast levitate on himself. Down here, we're going to throw a darkness. Because you can't see him, he's going to move to there. No opportunity to attack because you can't see him. After the dark elves, we go to the rogue. Mm. Ugh, I hate that I'm going to damage Fred, but shots taken is better than not. Bonus action hide. We're going to shoot our first dark elf to the east that I can see. Hide automatically succeeds. Attack with advantage. 29 to hit. 42 points of damage. DC 20 concentration for levitate. Mm -hmm. What do you got for me, buddy? Fails. Loses levitate. That's my turn. After the rogue, we go to the shadow demon. Shadow demon can fly for 30 feet. I do not want to go into that zone. Oh, boy. Shadow Demon's going to float over to there. They have an advantage to hit you because you can't see them. They have disadvantage to hit you because they can't see you. 15 to hit your fighter. AC is 20. That'll miss. After the Shadow Demon, we go to the Owl. I think he's going to still do the dodge thing. After the Owl is the wizard. That first fighter there is in range. Level 3, magic missile. One on the die, unfortunately. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 times 5 is 35. He's going to take 35 points of damage and drop. After that, we go to Cleric. Take one step forward, and I uh, should be in range for Sacred Flame. Dex 18. Fails. Hell yeah, 17 damage. Here's the concentration save. Fails with a 7. Anything else? I'll go pro. After the cleric, we go to the fighter. I'm going to go south after that runaway dark health fighter. Attack number 1. That is a 15 to hit. 15 misses. Second attack. That's a crit. Only 15 damage on the crit. The concentration save. Passes. The third attack. Another 15 to hit. 15's going to miss. Yep. You good there? Yeah. After that, we're going to go to the dark elves. Dark elf down here is going to dodge. No spells in or out, right? It blocks everything from level 5 and below. Only things cast outside can't come in, but things inside can go out. So, this warrior is going to advance. That guy's going to shoot a crossbow at disadvantage at the wizard. 12 to hit you. Yes. From downtown, this wizard is going to move there and cast greater invisibility on this wizard. Then that wizard is going to cast greater invisibility on the other one, and then they're going to move. After that, we're going to go to the rogue. Well, solved the problem in front of me. Bonus action hide, shoot the drow across the cliff. Can't fail the hide check. Straight to the attack roll. 25 to hit. 25 hits. Not bad. 35 points of damage. After the rogue, we're going to go to the shadow demon. Shadow demon's going to move after the fighter. 19 to hit you, fighter. He sees 20. Yep. After that, we're going to go to the owl. I will move in, do the flyby for the rogue, and come back. After the owl, we go to the wizard. Another magic missile at level 3. Who are we going after? Problem in front of us. That is a 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. He'll take 40 points of damage and drop. Beautiful. After the wizard, we go to the cleric. Can't see anything. Stand back up. Have your movement stand up. I guess I can start climbing. Give me an athletic check to climb down. Plus 7. Hey, wizard a crit on that. 27. 
27 will definitely do it. If I dash, I can climb another 10 feet down, right? Yep, you climb another 10 feet down. All right. You could drop the rest of the wave from there. Yeah, absolutely. Five feet from the bottom, which is not any falling damage. Cool. Good catch. After the cleric is the fighter. Gonna make attacks on the shadow demon. Attack number one. That is a 29 to hit. 29 hits. 18 magical slashing. Second attack. 19 to hit. Yep. For 14 damage. Attack number three. That is a 25 to hit. Yep. For 10 damage. Action surge. Attack number four. That's a one to hit. No, thank you. That's a 22 to hit. Yep. 12 damage. Last attack is a 23. Hits. 10 damage. That will do it for me. After that, we're going to go to the Dark Elves. Dark Elf down here at the bottom, the Elite Warrior is going to help the Shadow Demon attack the fighter. This wizard's going to move invisibly to there and cast Lightning Bolt, targeting the Cleric. Give me a DC 14 dexterity save. That's a six. Cast at fourth level. Take 37 points of lightning damage. Spell save was an 18. Then this one is going to go to there. It's going to cast Misty Step to move to there, and it's going to hit you with Ray of Frost. Advantage because you can't see it because it's invisible. It's going to be a 25 to hit. Will hit. Take 9 points of cold damage, and your movement speed is reduced by 10. Concentration save is 11. That'll pass. After that, we're going to go to the top of the order, Rogue. Am I over metagaming if I fairy fire the area where they just cast from? Absolutely not. You just saw two magical effects appear from that location. We are going to use my instrument of the bards to cast fairy fire. They need to make a DC 13. It is a 20-foot cube. Any creature in the area when the spell is cast is also outlined if it fails a dexterity saving throw. The northern drow gets an 18, the southern drow gets an 18. Okay, perfect. Then I will back up and use my bonus action to hide, and that is my turn. After that, we're going to go to the shadow demon. Shadow demon has advantage on this attack. It's going to get an 18 to hit you, which is not enough. After that, we go to the owl. He's going to dodge because there's nothing in his range that he sees. After the owl, we go to the wizard. Following suit with the rogue, I think I'm going to spam fire an AoE in that direction. Let's go fireball scroll. DC 18 dex, 31. The northern one will fail with a 10. It'll take 31 points of damage and drop. The southern one will fail with an 11. It'll take 31 points of damage. DC 15 concentration save. It's going to get... I don't think that matters because you swapped the castings. So we're visible now. <laughs> After the wizard, we go to the cleric. Minus 10 feet of movement, you're down to 15. I wobble 15 feet towards the wizards, I guess. Can I see them? Yeah, it's going to have cover from the cliff face, but you can see it. Sacred flame. Fails. 18 damage. 18 is lethal. When the summoner dies, the demon dies. After the cleric, we go to the fighter. I'm going to attack the one remaining dark elf. First attack, that is an 18 to hit. I'm going to use my reaction to increase my AC to 21 for that attack. It will miss. Gotcha, just for that attack? Just for that attack. Second attack is a 23 to hit for 13 damage. Here's the concentration save. Passes with an 18. Third attack, that's a crit for 24 damage. 24 points of damage, the Dark Elf drops, the Darkness drops, and the encounter ends. Report hit points. 139 out of 139. 110 out of 110. 72 out of 138. 150 out of 172. Any pre-rest actions? I will use the Pearl of Power to get a third level slot back. Sounds good. Same. Anyone below half? Nope. The second and final short rest. Is anybody going to spend any hit dice? I spend my remaining six hit dice for 22 HP. I spend eight hit dice for 60 hit points. Any post-rest actions? Yeah, I'm going to swap my Pearl of Power for Wing Boots during the short rest. I'm going to swap out my Pearl of Power for the Boots of the Winter Ones. I'm going to recover third level two second level slots back. The eclectic group of defenders continues as the adventurers march ever deeper downward through the tunnels and on towards the next encounter, clearing out the lair of the eye beast and looting the place as they go. Four encounters down, two more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.